What's up everybody, Jace Two Cents here, and we've got a new graphics card to talk about this year, and I'll be honest, it's one that I don't even know why it exists. I don't think it needs to be here, but regardless, I am going to go ahead and talk about the new 1070 Ti just launched by NVIDIA. But I'm not gonna talk about the traditional benchmarks. I'm not gonna go through all my benchmarking suite and put it up against all the other graphics cards because, spoiler alert, it's a little faster than a 1070 and a little slower than a 1080, which is exactly where you'd expect it to be. This time around, there's a rumor that you can't overclock the 1070 Ti, that Nvidia has locked it down and won't let the users overclock their cards. Well, we're gonna talk about that today. But let me go and talk about the rumor and the fact behind it, because the problem is everyone just copies these rumors basically word for word, and then misinformation gets out there and people become confused as to what the facts are. Here's the fact. The Founders Edition card and all of the AIB cards will be shipping with the exact same clock speed. Now you see all these custom cards behind me here, both Nvidia and AMD, which is over here behind Nick. People seem to forget I have a wall of AMD cards, but each AIB does, de determines and builds their own custom boards and their own custom cooling. And with that, their own core clocks based on what they think is gonna be stable for the public. And they're always faster than the reference design. This time around, that's not the case, which leads people going, well, then why do they have a custom cooler? Why are there two eight pin power plugs on this card if they're not allowed to overclock it? Well, the difference is AIBs aren't allowed to, but you are. So that's the first bit of bullshit that's been floating around out there about you not being able to overclock your 1070 Ti. You absolutely can, which is why these custom designs still exist. So this is the 1070 Ti, as you would expect, it's a 19 or 2,432 CUDA cores versus the 1,920 CUDA cores found in the 1070. Um, but again, it has less CUDA cores than what you would find in a 1080. Base clock is 1608, boost clock is 1683. And of course, GPU boost 3.0 is gonna take that even farther based on cooling conditions. So again, that's why you have AIB custom coolers that exist like this guy right here. So let's kind of go ahead and do a test here. What is Windows reminding me of this time? Windows feature update, get out of here with that crap. Out of the box settings, this is MSI, MSI Afterburner, nothing special. You can still adjust and move all your sliders just like you want. And uh, yeah, there's nothing weird about that. So you can indeed overclock it. When it comes to Time Spy, standard clock, we got a 6816 GPU score. 1080 Founders had a 7288. And then if we compare that to a 1070, 1070 founders had a 5839. So it's actually closer to a 1080 than it is to a 1070, which leads to why they're factory locked for the AIBs and why the AIBs cannot ship them faster than what the NVIDIA specs are. But like I said, that doesn't mean we can't play around with that. So as you saw, we got a score of overclocked 7835. So where does that stack up against out of the box 1080s? Well, we have got the 1080 FE was a 7288, as we already talked about. Remember, these, these are stock clocks right here. So remember, you can't overclock a 1080, of course, and get even faster. 1080 Arctic Storm was a 7691, so that was slower. But once you overclock the Arctic Storm, it goes quite a bit faster. Uh, what else have we got here? It's faster than the 1080 Classified out of the box on the Slave BIOS. And it is faster than a 1080 Hybrid out of the box, 7470. So that's pretty impressive. And it's right behind the Zotac 1080 Amp Extreme right there at 8,012. So that should really come as no surprise. In fact, the core speed that I was getting on that with my profile right here, and for my profile, I'm running voltage at plus 100, so that's given max voltage at a lower frequency, power limit set to 120, temp limit set to 83. Actually, that's allowed to be cranked. And then core clock, I ran a 250 and a 450 on the memory which actually gave me a 2152 megahertz core speed. And then of course, as it gets hotter, because it's founder's card, it starts to come down a little bit. So the question is now, can a custom card come anywhere close to that? Let's take a look. So the founder's card was automatically GPU boosting up to about 1883, falling down to about 1797, and sometimes a little lower depending on temps, which I don't think surprises anybody. So already there's a benefit to a custom card when it comes to cooling. But again, this is old news, nothing new. But what I wanna test right now is if this boosts up to that same factory clock, 
because it should, right? The P states and the BIOS uh, frequencies should be identical as the factory because that's what they are being forced to do. But there's a way around all that, and we'll talk about that in a second. And I don't mean by downloading Afterburner and doing custom benchmarking. I mean a specific approach that EB EBGA is taking with this, and it's new for them, which I think is really cool, and we're gonna talk about that. Uh, but first, we need to check and see what we were actually boosting up to. I like to use TimeSpy though, because it's a DX12 benchmark. It's actually fairly demanding on graphics cards and it's gonna allow the graphics card to actually ramp up to uh, a pretty significant amount of, of boost clock. Did that leak just get bigger? Oh shit. <laughs> it sounds like it, huh? It does. 1898 is where it went up to at 100% load. So. Okay, the claims are obviously validated now that they are running the exact same speed. So we'll let this go. We'll see what the out of the box score is on this guy versus the Founders 1080. I expect it to be a little bit higher because I think the cooling situation is gonna keep the core clock more stable at a higher frequency. Uh, but then obviously we'll talk about a pretty cool new feature. <laughs> okay, so this is a little teaser to a video we got coming up here. We've got a big ass tank of liquid nitrogen with a big ass dent in it, which is already kind of scary, <laughs> first of all. But we were sitting over there making this video and suddenly it started leaking. I'll do it again. I don't think it's supposed to do that. I don't even have gloves on. It's getting colder. This is what happens when you get tips with the nitrogen. It's play. cold in there. I put my finger to plug the hole. No, no, no one do that. Well, now I gotta get it to stop again. There you go. Okay, just leave it at that setting. Wait, it's slowing down. I told you just leave it at that setting. Okay, so our factory graphics score, 6952 out of the box. If we look at our core stability here, you can see we stayed a uh, max temp of 72, which is pretty good. And then our core clock, uh, 1911s where it hit for like a split second and then it came down to the 18s and it stayed significantly higher. When we tested the Founders Edition card, uh, Nick will attest to this, it dropped down to like 1797. So already the core clock stayed much higher on this, as expected. Again, this is not surprising stuff on a card that doesn't even need to exist, honestly. Uh, but again, our score of a 69.52. So it was more than 100 points higher than the Founders Edition card out of the box. And 69.52 puts it right up pretty close, about, within about 200 points of a uh, Vega 64. Significantly faster than a 56, uh, Vega 56. And then, yeah, so it's sitting right where we'd expect it. It's slower than a 1080, obviously, but without being overclocked. And significantly faster than a 1070 Founders at 5839. So not bad out of the box. Like I said, about 140-ish, 137 points or whatever it is faster. Okay. So EVGA's Precision app, or Precision OC, has been updated specifically for this card. And what it's gonna do when you install it, it's gonna scan the card. It's gonna recognize that you have a 1070 Ti in there. And then it wants you to actually register your card. I forgot about all that. Um, let's register it with a funky name. See if anyone notices this. Okay, Taser Face. And then we'll put in my email. Okay, so this is what's new right here. This is the EBGA Precision XOC Scanner. And what it's gonna do, it's gonna scan my 1070 Ti. Once you submit here, check this out. So it's got what's called OC scan mode. And it's gonna, I'm, I'm sorry you haven't kneel at that, Nick. That's really small, huh? Uh, quick test, 15 to 20 minutes. Full test, 30 to 60 minutes. Or you can just go straight to manual overclocking. Now what these first two tests are gonna do is they are going to scan your card and it's gonna run it through a series of tests, probably using Furmark or something. I know they love using Furmark. And it's gonna find stable overclocks for you. Now, I don't wanna say it's a lot like another product, but this is very similar to how ASUS's uh, five-way optimization works, only it does it with CPUs as well as GPUs. So, I don't know, maybe we'll do the quick test, the 15 to 20 minutes, and then we'll go with a manual overclocking test. I'm just kinda curious as to where it's gonna take this 
out of the box. Now, right now this only exists with 1070 Ti, but I wouldn't be surprised if this doesn't now force EVGA down a path where they start doing this with all their cards, because why the heck not? If the scanner can automatically do it, then that allows you to overclock your card and take some of your fear out of it. All right, I'm gonna apologize now about the hissing sound. That big container over there is still purging because as it's warmer in here, it's expanding and then it's got a purge valve. So that's just gonna keep happening until we use it tomorrow. But anyway, so it finished its overclock. It says right here, your overclock has been saved. Apply this overclock on your startup. I'm gonna hit yes. It's pretty conservative. It didn't touch the memory at all. It only went plus 101 on the core which I think is super conservative. Yeah, so we're gonna go ahead and just go to manual mode here. We're gonna crank that. We're gonna try matching what I can get with the founder's card, which is 250 on the core, 450 on the memory. That sound is really annoying. I I'm only tolerating it because I know what's coming next with it. And the nitrous oxide. Oh wait, is it liquid nit Is it nitrogen the liquid oxide? Right. <laughs> Nick has this theory that we're gonna get really happy, like laughing gas happy. But that's nitrous oxide, not liquid nitrogen. You don't breathe liquid nitrogen. So unfortunately though, it crashed with the same settings I was able to run with reference. That means one of two things. Um, I potentially lost the lottery, or Nvidia is super cherry picking which GPUs they keep for the founders cards, which is something that we kind of assume that they did with the 1080. But um, yeah, yeah, it's too bad. I mean, it really seems like NVIDIA is cherry picking, uh, you know, the best cores and keeping them for the Founders Edition cards. But you still get a lot of benefits though on custom cards, whether it's EVGA or any other brand, right? You're getting better cooling, you're getting theoretically a better built PCB, so longevity would be better as you're overclocking these cards. Uh, backplate on this, RGB control. Of course, this particular card has the ICX9 sensor, so you get to monitor temperature for memory, power delivery, and core. Um, so, I mean, obviously there's their benefits. But it looks like we might actually make it in this time. And it's probably gonna be sitting right around that 2101 clock speed again. So you can see right up here, just loading, 2101. So what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna let this go and I'm gonna see exactly how 2101 compares to how the Founders Edition card did. And considering the Founders Edition card still throttles a little bit downward, even though I had the fan set to 85%, I have a feeling that this card might match and maybe slightly surpass that score just based on my past experiences with Founders versus custom cards that are a little slower on the core speed. So at least in this one benchmark, let's try it out. It looks like we completed with a plus 200. Uh, so our score is a 7,772 and a 7,772 that puts us uh, obviously way ahead of the 1070 Founders. And if we compare this to the TIFC, so we're only about, we're about what? 60 points lower than an OC'd reference card and uh, quite a bit higher than a standard, you know, reference card. So anyway, here's the bottom line. This card doesn't need to exist. It really doesn't because it's, it's a weird stopgap card in between a gap that's not big enough, I think, to slide in a card like this and have it make sense. I think it's still making all kinds of noise and like clinking and stuff. It's scary being that close to that. Anyway. Sorry about the noise. So this is 449, this is 499, and all the custom cards from all the brands that you're used to seeing, like this wall right here, are within about $10 of each other. But you get a significant additional amount of, or, you know, value for the 50 bucks, right? Like I mentioned, the, at least this card, the two fans, the ICX, the custom PCB, custom power delivery, backplate, multiple BIOS. The question is whether or not, uh, it makes a whole lot of sense to, to do that considering that's what the MSRP for a 1080 is. But we all know that the 1080s are also marked up to around 550 bucks. So between the $400 range and the $550 range, you have three cards. I guess it's kind of neat to have like a $50 leapfrog effect in pricing, but I just, I don't know. So I guess the bottom line is I just don't necessarily feel like this card should be here, but that's just a personal opinion of mine. What do you guys think? But all the custom cards are sitting right around $489 to $499. Bucks. They're still not cheap by any means. It's just a weird card slid into a gap. Like it slid like right into those DMs. It slid into a gap that was just, I don't know. Did you guys find that gap to be too wide? Sound off in the comments and tell me what you guys think. Anyway, if you think there's any other tests I should do with this card, let me know. I don't think I'm gonna do a whole lot of testing on 1070 Ti. Not a whole lot of purpose or reason for that. But uh, I'm going to go, guys. LN2 video coming up next. That's going to be a fun one. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.